Oh dear lord, my YouTube's collectible just went live and mmm, is that making me sweat. Available in limited quantities for 24 hours, I think it might be time you had your very own Nigel to have your way with. <laughs> About a month ago, I posted a very special insufferable Instagram recapping almost all of the previous series subjects to see how they were surviving these days in the unforgiving battle for online relevance. And you guys really seem to enjoy it, but I made one fatal mistake. I left out the godfather of deplorables, the infamous Boom Gang. And boy, did you guys let me know it in the comments. Good Christ. Now, in my defense, Boonk wasn't technically part of Insufferable Instagram because I hadn't solidified that as a series at that point. Anyways, enough of the semantics. Here's your flipping Boonk Gang update, jerks. <laughs> So my initial video about Boonk was published November 25th, 2017, in which I was very critical of him as a person and the tactics he was using to go viral online. Now, I was certainly not alone in this criticism, and to this day, Boonk remains one of the most hated online celebrities I can think of in recent years. But as you and I both know by now, hate can sometimes be a stronger fuel than admiration when it comes to lighting the fire of someone's popularity. So here's a quick recap of why Boonk had become infamous up to the point I published my initial video in November of 2017. Boonk's brazen Instagram videos often showcased him stealing, harassing the working class, and showing a general disrespect to everyone and everything for the sake of his own virality. Initially going viral for a video where he jumped behind a counter at Popeyes and nonchalantly stole a meal for himself, his nothing to lose attitude and repeated willingness to embrace criminal behavior on camera would garner him 3.6 million Instagram followers in the short span of just over six months. He started trends like the hood slip and slide, coined the popular phrase, Boom gang, whole lot of gang. You know what I'm saying? And he was responsible for the term getting booked, becoming synonymous with getting played or stolen from. He was the living embodiment of the worst side of social media fame. Now the trickle down effect of Boonk's distasteful behavior and subsequent popularity was evident everywhere online, with kids all over the place trying to forge their own path to stardom, using the same disregard for the law and disrespect for basic human sensibilities. And it was that influence on these young kids that probably bothered me the most, to be honest, and at that time, I would have loved nothing more than to see Boonk's existence get deleted off the internet, and if he went skydiving and his parachute didn't open, probably wouldn't have lost a wink of sleep over it. <gasps> but I like to think I've grown since then, and I want to approach this matter more delicately from a place of human empathy instead of just anger, and I think a great place to start is his No Jumper podcast appearance that took place just one month after I made my initial video. But before we jump headfirst into that, Nigel's been begging me off camera to have a quick word with you guys, so what's up, bro? Yo, what you mean, what's up, fat ass? You already know what it is. Today's the live date for my YouTube's collectible, baby. Hey, Nigel's famous now, bitch. We finna pop bottles and smash models. Let's get it. Oh, snap. You're right. These did just go live. And just to clarify, this is my collectible, not yours. And you can get yours now if you pause this video and go to YouTube's.com. Amen, Leon. And I'm here to tell the Tomato Mafia what kind of life-changing benefits they can expect when they get their very own Leon Lush collectible. You'll now have someone to keep you in perfect focus while you're vlogging your definitely exciting life. He acts as a Michelin five-star rated safety helmet for scenic bike trips. He even stunt doubles as a dryer sheet. He can replace your child. And he will never cry or sh** his pants. He's a delicious addition to your morning cereal, providing three billion important dietary GMOs. He can also replace your water intake for maximum hydration. He'll offer encouragement when you're pinching off a tough one. And finally, he'll keep your wife happy at night while you're up late editing stupid YouTube videos. The evidence speaks for itself, so stop what you're doing and open your browser and go to YouTube's.com and change your life today. Now these ship worldwide and they ship absolutely free, but they are in limited quantities and they will never be made again. So take that giant leap of faith and lead yourself into a more fulfilling life. Hallelujah. In this hour-long podcast, a visibly and admittedly sober boonk, which he stated was a recent decision. I just stopped. Yeah, I, 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 w I went through a withdrawal for like a couple of days, but that's it, just a couple of days. How do you feel now? Feel good. Takes us through a journey through a large portion of his life and his recent rapid rise to popularity. But it was my first experience seeing a more human side of boonk outside of the obnoxious viral videos that he became famous for. Like me, I'm coming from nothing. 
I ain't got shit to lose. You For know real. What I'm saying? I mean, that's that's what you could tell. That's why I would say when I watched your videos at first, I was like, man, this guy got nothing to lose. I ain't you got shit. Fuck. Yeah, I don't get you know, and I got to do something with my life. Mm -hmm. I start making videos. From his abusive and broken home life to his foster care and homelessness roaming the streets, his stealing out of necessity before the cameras were around because his mother didn't keep any food in the house and he had no clothes to put on his back. Boonk was clearly a dude that was dealt a rough hand growing up and he was doing whatever he could to survive without any sort of boundaries. And I'm not excusing his behavior by any means, I'm just offering some additional perspective on where he came from. He talked about his heavy Percocet and Xanax abuse, which I believe fueled his online debauchery as he started to realize the stuff he had grown up doing to survive, he could just film himself doing and garner a massive amount of attention online. And that attention became a new kind of addiction, giving him quick dopamine hits every time a video would go viral, helping further anesthetize the pain of his childhood. Now at the time of this interview, it seemed like a turning point for Boonk, where he was very adamant about leaving behind the stuntman, Boonk, which he called himself, that initially made him famous and trying to embrace what he considered his real self, Boonk, the rapper or musician. Are you really leaving all that behind? Yeah, like, it kicked off. I'm glad it kicked off. You know what I'm saying? I got everybody's attention. Right. But that's not who I want to be. I didn't want to be a, a, um, a stuntman. You right. Know what I'm I wanted to just give the people the artist side of Boom Game. Hell yeah. So. I'm so glad that we got this interview when you were sober. Now, due to his checkered past with the law and his already handful of arrests because of some videos he had recorded, it's probable that this come-to-Jesus moment for Boonk was a necessity to keep himself out of jail. But it was a promising turn, for sure. A sober Boonk gang wanting to make some better life choices. Hell yeah, baby! I'm here for it! Unfortunately, that sobriety would turn out to be short-lived, as 2018 turned out to be one of the most difficult times for this master of thievery. He started out the year waving a loaded gun around at a radio interview with his finger on the trigger, making everyone there uncomfortable, uh, rightly so, and proved that he really hadn't made that much progress as a human yet. I wouldn't pull the gun out, and I don't feel comfortable having a gun in the studio. You could put it... One bus with shots. No, not in here. Two, 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 five, 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 five. Fast forward to March and police get a warrant to search Boonk's residence in Calabasas, probably in large part due to his self-incriminating posts he was putting on social media, which is always so serendipitous when this happens to people. But they, they search his place and he gets arrested for having assault weapons and narcotics he didn't have a prescription for. Whoops a daisies. <laughs> Anyways, he got out on a $35,000 bail, and from here, things start to spiral pretty rapidly. Now, Boonk had mentioned in the No Jumper interview the possibility of him getting signed with Offset, but that never came to fruition, and it seemed pretty clear over these past couple months that he had really been pushing the music career, and it wasn't quite popping the way he had hoped. It seemed, shocker, that people just weren't as interested in his music as they were in him recording himself being a brazen criminal. So now it's July 1st, 2018, and Boonk inexplicably posts stories to his Instagram of him engaging in very explicit acts with some primo thoughts. Now it's pretty clear at this point that Boonk was back on the drugs heavy and his motivation behind posting these is mystifying. Everybody knows if you do that sort of thing on Instagram, you get deleted. I'm sure his judgment might have been a little clouded, but his need for attention probably played a role as well. And he did go viral on Twitter. He was a trending hashtag and those Instagram stories saw over 7 million views apiece before the next day, his Instagram account got deleted. Get that, get that crap out of here. Hope it was worth it. Newsflash, it wasn't. Now in hindsight, Boonk wasn't dealing well with the reality of losing his 5.2 million follower Instagram account, and just a few weeks later, on his now famous return to the No Jumper podcast, Boonk is pretty much circling the drain in this interview with Adam22, who's visibly concerned and irritated. All right, well, listen. This 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 interview is going viral. Well, he was right about that. So what what's going on? No no no, we're not in the in, we're not in the interview yet. We're just chilling right now. So. You know we're live though, right? Now from what I understand, this was unplanned. Boonk just showed up obliterated to Adam's podcast studio. And Adam didn't want anything to do with it, but he just rolled with it for about 30 minutes of Boonk's incoherent ramblings and were able to get a couple of points out of him before his famous clip of him basically passing out and falling into the wall of the studio. Okay, why did your Instagram get deleted? Why my Instagram get get deleted? Have you seen have you seen my Instagram? Not in a while because it got deleted. All right, before it got deleted, we have you seen my Instagram? I did see you getting some top. All right, you see me getting top. 
But is that fair that my Instagram get deleted? I would say that's pretty clearly like a violation of their terms of service. Mm. Yeah. No. So Boonk's basically like, yo, Adam, did you see my Instagram? He's like, well, not for a while. It was deleted. And Boonk's like, well, did you see it before it was deleted? It was popping. And Adam's like, yeah, well, that doesn't really matter if it just gets deleted. <laughs> I got I got 8 million views in like six hours. Was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, it was worth it. Because, listen. I don't think Boonk really had it set in yet that he wasn't going to be able to get his account back at this point. 5.2 million before they deleted me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, it's no use getting a bunch of followers if you're just going to get your account deleted. No, no, listen, listen, listen. I'm not deleted. I'm suspended. For how long? Spoiler alert. Forever. When I come back on the ground, I'm gonna come back more. I'm gonna come back more stronger. People are missing me. People are wanting to see me. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when I do come back, they're gonna be like. Finally, yes, he's back. Spoiler alert again. It never came back. Boom game. Boom game. Whole lot of games. You already know. We out here. So eventually, Boom starts falling asleep mid-sentence, so they wrap it up, and it ends with this iconic moment. Shout out to the homie, Boom. Oh, my. Oh, bro. Help me with Okay. All right. You, you good? good? You good? Now, there was a mixed response to this podcast. A lot of people were concerned, rightfully so. There was a lot of people that were pumped about it because they're like, screw this guy, Karma's a bitch, because he had a lot of people that didn't like his online existence, myself included. But I personally uh, had mixed feelings. I never liked to see or celebrate someone clearly struggling with addictions or some serious demons, which is clearly what was going on with Boonk Gang at this point. So following that interview, Boonk was clearly flirting with rock bottom. I think more and more is the realization that he wasn't getting his IG account back. The reality started to set in. He was posting what seemed like cries for help on his socials. Posting things like, I do drugs because I feel alone. When I'm high, I feel nothing. When I'm sober, I feel everything. And my whole life, people push me away, acting like they care about me. Shortly after that, he had uploaded some videos of him crying, and then this all culminated into him uploading stories on his way to the hospital, bloody, because apparently he had been shot two times in the leg. Now at the time, nobody knew what had happened. Everyone was concerned. They didn't know if someone was trying to kill him or if he had tried to do it himself. Uh, but as things unfolded, it looks as though Boonk had actually shot himself in the leg and it was pretty murky as far as the details, but a lot of people were speculating that he did it on purpose for clout because we know how addicted he is to that attention or he had possibly failed an attempt at taking his own life or accidentally shot himself. No one really knows the truth. I'll let you make your own assumption on that. So Boonk's IG gets deleted, he hits rock bottom, he's struggling hard, he's back on the drugs, he's exhibiting some scary behavior, which ultimately leads to him recording himself in a car on the way to the hospital with two self-inflicted gunshot wounds to his leg. What happens next? Well, let's fast forward to October. John Gabbana here, and um, I just want to say really quick that drug addiction and drug abuse is a real thing, and everybody takes drugs for their own reason. I took drugs because uh, I felt and I, st I still feel empty inside. You know, I got a lot of shit going on in my, in my personal life that I'm not going to get into. But uh, I had to stop and slow it down because I felt myself dying. I literally felt myself dying. And I realized that it's too early for me to die. Shit, I just turned 22. I got a lot to live for. And I want to say if there's anybody out there with a drug addiction problem, that I hope you stop and slow it down and that you realize that you have a lot to live for as well. You know, God loves you. But, um... I'm a fin I'm a finish enjoying this beautiful day outside and this uh donut. Everybody stay safe. Let's get to the bag. You know what I'm saying? We all got a lot to live for. Boom! What a turnaround! Good lord, Book is back. He is two months clean. And he is just so genuine in this video and speaking with so much self-awareness, it really made my heart tingle. On a human level, 
it made me happy to see a video like this. Book had hit rock bottom, scratched and clawed his way out of it, and now, two months sober, we witnessed the death of Boot Gang in the birth of John Gabbana. He released an album around this time as John Gabbana, and he had some world star hip hop exclusive music videos that were being uploaded. He wasn't getting the same amount of attention as he was when he was Boonk, but he was making a legitimate effort and getting some spins. Now, I listened through a lot of the album, and most of it was pretty trash, but there was one song called I I that I think, objectively speaking, could hold a candle to other rap songs, commercially speaking. I keep a bag up in my safe because I don't do what well with them banks. I be quick to lose my temper. It'd be hard for me to think. I mean, that low key kind of slaps, no? <laughs> So now we're in 2019, in the first couple of months, John Gabbana would be spending in jail. Is Boonk in jail? That's a good question. My dude right here will be able to answer that a lot better. I can't answer that question, to be honest. Yeah, is Boonk in jail? Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real crook just got out. Yesterday. So it looks like he was eventually sentenced for the May 2018 arrest for the assault weapons and the illegal narcotics, spent a couple months in jail, and then was released uh, late February 2019. Boom, what happened? Some guns. You know what I'm saying? Some regular shit. Some guns. Hit and run guns. Zannies. So at this point, everyone still knows him as Boonk. That whole side of his online presence is dead. And he did say that he's on three years probation now after getting out of jail, so he can't possibly be doing that type of stuff anyways. So he's full bore into the John Gabbana music. And in May, he updates us with this little video. For those who don't know, February 22nd, got out of jail. A month later, last month, April 8th, signed a record deal. So I'm an official artist, signed to the Universal Island Records. <laughs> Congratulations, yes, I know. I got a uh, project dropping, it's an EP, The Boogie John. All my fans should already know about that, you know what I'm saying? Six songs. No features so far, no features. Apparently he signed a record deal with Universal Island Records. He's got an EP on the way. At this point in time, nothing's been released, but it looks like things may be looking up for the future of John Gabbana. Six weeks or enough while you're together. Or not, because six weeks ago, in the beginning of July, apparently Boonk was out and gotten in an altercation with some people. Nobody knows really what led up to it. Some people are theorizing that he was going back to his old ways and trying to do some dumb pranks in public, but some guy came up out of nowhere and sucker punched him in the jaw and just shattered it to pieces. I'm not gonna show the footage for obvious reasons, but it's easy to find online. But anyways, Boonk had to have his jaw wired shut for six weeks, which makes it not only difficult to eat, but probably can't do a whole lot of rapping in those six weeks. So it might have to put John Gabbana on ice for a bit. Now, as you might expect, there was an overwhelming response of people happy that he got demolished and had to have his jaw wired shut because the stink of his ex-career as a thieving dickhead hasn't quite washed off yet, even though he's trying to make strides in a new direction as John Gabbana. So here we are, the legendary thieving boot gang whole lot of gang you know what I'm is now John Gabbana the rapper. His socials are an absolute mess. From what I can tell, his Twitter is deleted. Obviously his original IG got deleted. His John Gabbana IG, I think, got deleted. And now he goes by Gabbana.ig which is literally just three posts of him promoting his new release, which just came out yesterday at the time of me recording this. So although Boonk may be dead and replaced with John Gabbana, he will forever live in our hearts as one of the most obnoxious pieces of shit to ever grace the internet. And now he has gone from a caterpillar and flourished into a beautiful butterfly flying into a career as a cookie cutter um, pretty untalented rapper. <laughs> so shed a tear for Boonk if you must, but grab your AirPods and settle in, because Universal's fresh and upcoming artist, John Gabbana, is probably currently laying down some fire bars through a wired shut jaw. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for heading to YouTube's.com and picking up this limited edition collectible, and thank you for liking and subscribing. Until next time, this is Lou Bega with Mambo Number no. 5. Over and out. Yeah. You. You. You.